great day, everyone. Uh, my name is Munir Ajam. I am the founder and CEO of Rook Project Management. In this video, we're going to touch on a topic we have been talking about quite frequently in, um, in recent weeks and months, which is the idea of uh, what you don't see on the slide right now is basically the idea of transforming project management. And in our podcast and some paper we wrote and other areas, we've been emphasizing the idea that in order to transform project management, which means transform the way organization lead project and programs and portfolios and, and uh, basically, so project management in the broader sense, is before we can transform, especially on the project side, we must respect our diversity. Now, what does that mean? That's what we will try to explain today, including the concept of the project management level. So the mission is to transform the project management state of practice while respecting our diversity. And this is why we're introducing the concept of project management levels. Now, what we mean by respecting our diversity? Uh, we know that projects across domain share processes and common concepts. But how to manage a project how to manage these projects depend on many variables. For example, the project type, sector, domain, size, complexity, degree of innovation. Uh, we must also distinguish between project uh, for service provider versus project owner. Even within project owner organization, right? And when we mean by the project owner here, we're not talking about the person, you know, the, the, uh, that represent the customer. We're talking about the organization, the project owner organization we might have different perspective. For example, you know, the facilities, uh, if we're talking about facilities, the facilities planning versus project management versus the user, right? So there are different people using, should be and are using project management, each in a different way. Therefore, we must understand and respect that concept uh, because not everybody need to manage project the same way. And again, this is uh, the idea, what triggers the idea of project management levels. So what are these project management levels? I will show them here in this picture, which is an inver inverted pyramid, right? And one of the reason we are doing this inverted pyramid concept is because when we start at the bottom with level one, as you can see in a second, right? And as you go up that, that pyramid, that inverted pyramid, you can see the the size of the bar or the segment uh, get wider, <clears throat> which means we have a broader perspective, right? Uh, which means we are covering more of the project. <clears throat> this is very important uh, distinction. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, what are these levels? Let me just introduce them right now, and then I will talk about each one of them in the following slide. First level, task management. Let's face it, a lot of people, they might have the title project manager. <clears throat> By the way, I mean, let's joke for a second. A lot of people could have the project, the title of project manager and they might be managing all the tasks. And some people may not have the title of project manager and they might be managing at level five, right? So titles means nothing in this case. Uh, so we're talking about the functionality, the function of managing the work. So in many situations, we have situation where on small projects, simplified project organization, they have not built project management processes or systems in place. Uh, in reality, their project management effort is nothing more than managing tasks. You know, they, they, uh, they think of about the project, they break it down into tasks, and they manage those tasks. And obviously, managing those tasks leads to, uh, lead to accomplishing the project objective Again, in that case, most likely, we're talking about small, simple project. However, often enough, we find a lot of people actually are called project manager. If we wanna be academic about it, they should be called stage, stage manager. I hope I didn't upset too many people now. Uh, so why? Because technically, we are managing a piece of the project, typically a stage, right? For example, if I'm managing a construction, which could be $100 million, right? Technically, uh, we are managing a stage of the project, which is the construction stage 
of a facility project, a hospital, a petrochemical plant, whatever the case might be. Or if I'm managing engineering uh, in software, if I'm managing the development of a software product, right? So you are in the implementation part of the project. So in reality, yes, you might call that a project, but in a way you are really managing a stage of a bigger project, of a business project. And then, of course, we have what we call technical project management. I'm, I'm going to stop explaining here because I'll explain on the next few slides. Uh, and that is probably, you know, the most common today. If we talk about people who sit, call themselves or organization where they do project management, uh, most likely they are at level two or level three. In most situation we have seen, uh, is, it would be level two or level three. So it's very likely if you are listening to this uh, video, you could be at level two or level three. Again, this is not an insult. This is not something that level three is ah, sexier or better than level two. It's not. It's just different way of managing based on organizational preference and the type of the project, right? If you are only working in implementation, nothing wrong with that. Do the best job you can and we are all happy, right? So these are just a different way of categorizing how we manage project. So as we said, typically, you know, if you are in level one to three, you're most likely working as a service provider or maybe a technical team within an organization. <clears throat> and uh, uh, because this is obviously in a RUC uh, platform related post as well, educational, but also related. Can you use the RUC platform here? Yes, of course, we can use the RUC platform for any of these levels. However, if you are really like close to level one, uh, or maybe even level two, there might be some other tools out there that are more straightforward for you. Let's be honest and clear. <clears throat> and then we have what we call product delivery. And then finally, we have what we call the value deliver delivery model. And uh, in this case, uh, typically project owners, right, uh, operate at that level. Now, and I know in many situations, many situation, there are some contractor or service provider that work with the owner on a project from the very beginning. So yes, in that case, the project, uh, the, the seller, the buyer, the service provider, the contractor would be working more like a, 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 supplemental, a, a, supplement, a supplemental team uh, to supplement, uh, uh, basically an outsourced team to supplement, maybe that's the right word, to supplement a project owner or to support a project owner in managing the, pro the project across the entire life cycle. Now, of course, this is these two levels are ideal for the Rook platform. Uh, so basically, um, if you work at this level, the Rook platform would be of great value to you. Now, let's talk about the different level. We already mentioned some of that. So obviously, task management level one, uh, your typical focus is on managing project tasks, use on small project. And I think it's clear, so I don't need to read the slide for you. A typical stage, when we're talking about stage management, you know, ideally here, you, you know, the process group from PMI or ISO, or what you see here on the screen is our set of processes that we have adopted ourselves from existing literature, from PMI and ISO and all of us, we have, uh, and, uh, and uh, these concepts, and of course the Plan Do Check Act uh, that originate the whole idea, for us at least. So we have developed this, and you notice here we have six set of processes. Uh, but in a way, the focus is on the stage. And of course, as we move from stage to stage, we could repeat these things. There could be different people, like for example, engineering, construction, typically project. In engineering stage, we will be doing all of these for engineering, and then we're done, we go to construction. Again, we'll be doing all of these for construction, and potentially, we start with most of the people will be different. So the focus here is on managing a stage. Now, technical project management, obviously, sometimes people misunderstand that mean to mean managing technical project. No, and our, our definition in my dictionary, in the Uruk Coach Dictionary, uh, in this case, technical project management is where project management is focused only on, on, pro on, on delivering an output, right? Uh, so they, in that case, project management is not involved in the decision making to decide or approve a project and they're not uh, involved later on in the project. They're just basically, they are giving a charter that the project is authorized, go do it, right? And it could be, 
you know, one stage, two stage, three stages, or maybe even four stages, and go deliver the product and then close at the end. So a reality is really two stages, which is really design or implement, maybe even one stage. Right? However, there could be situation where, you know, we could have to go through some, some more stages than just implement. Right? If it's just implement, it will be stage management. So there will be some additional aspect of it as well. Right? However, as we said, it start with an authorization and end with delivering a product or an output, whatever that is. <clears throat> Now we go to level four, which is almost similar as you can see. However, what you notice here, we added something in the front, which mean what we are, uh, what we, which, what that mean is that project management should be involved in the discovery phase. That that project management does not start with a charter. If the business team, the organization team, are doing the discovery stage or phase without support from project management there is a very high likely chance of failure. A lot of research and study shows that project failed due to poor or lack of a proper business case and feasibility studies done. That's why we need to get project management involved up front. And that is a product delivery model is still focusing on delivering a product. So obviously this is slightly higher level than before. It's broader in scope than before. However, it's still not our ideal situation. That is our ideal situation for project owner. Right? I need to emphasize that and re-emphasize that and re-re-emphasize that. If you are a project owner organization, which means the organization that is launching a new something and you are getting the benefit of that new something, then you really need to think about something like this, right? So a lot of something. Uh, discovery phase, the project that divide, we divide the project life cycle into phases and there are stages. Now remember something very important, we haven't said it yet in this video, we've said it in many other videos, is that the whole idea, the principle for us to develop a project management methodology is our two core, there are many principles, but there are two core principles. Principle number one is what you see on the screen covering the entire life cycle and even beyond the LT closure, uh, from vision to market and beyond, right? Success assessment after the project is completed. That is the core principle, covering that entire thing. The second principle is that this has to be adaptive and scalable, that means tailored, right? So we could have situation with project with four stages and four gates, or you can have project maybe with 12 stages and stage gate. What you see here is nine. This is the standard model that we developed years ago. From here, what can we do? We can combine stages. We can split stages uh, based on the different environment. Typically in technology and business project, we'll probably have less stages. In large complex project and even definitely mega project, we could have much, much more uh, details in here. So it's similar to product delivery model, except in this model, we emphasize the discovery phase. And also if you notice on toward the right, on the second row, we have what we call the operational readiness stages. So in this case, we don't only have the team that focusing on building a facility, we also need to work on making sure that all the supporting people that need to work on operational readiness and then move into initial operation, they need to be planned and included. And that's what we see here, and that is the Uruk model. Obviously, the Uruk model is adaptive. If you, in your organization, you start at the gate two, for example, that's a similar model, but you start at gate two only, that's tailorable, right? We can tailor a method for you to fit your exact need. Whether you want to include everything in here, more or less, doesn't matter. Uh, we can tailor it for you. So what does the Rook platform fit? As we mentioned, organization can use the platform at any of the levels. However, it's best value for the project owners following a product delivery model or the value delivery model. With this, we say thank you. Uh, you can always visit our website and you can, from our website, there is a tab that called knowledge where you can get access to our videos, uh, YouTube channel, our podcast channel, our blog site, 
Uh, and you can also access our Rook, Rook platform website, which is where you can get uh, potentially, if you'd like to do a trial plan. Uh, and always we're here for you. You can always basically uh, reach out to us and request a special meeting, special open discussion, or maybe even a tailored demo to your need. With this, we say thank you. Uh, we wish you success today, tomorrow, and always.